conceptual Jay sounded better than Jay Prince. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that everything is going as planned for the week we're winding down. Uh, this is an exciting week for me. Not only are we in the holidays and the holiday spirits, no matter what do you feel about, I'm not big on commercial holidays, but I am big on the season, the, 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 the fall, the, the weather, uh, the love that's shared between families that know how uh, to love the excitement and glee that you can see on the face of children uh, as they anticipate Christmas. I don't care where you stand on the commercialization of holidays, which I am not big on. I still love this time of year. Not only that, this week, it's, 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 as a matter of fact, tomorrow uh, is my wedding anniversary. And so that is special for two reasons number one i married uh the love of my life i married uh, my hero uh, a person that i absolutely adore and i get to celebrate that with her on tomorrow and also it's a memorial uh to the people that taught me how to love my great-grandparents who reared me were also married on that same day. And so this is an excited time for me, you know, the holidays, uh, the weather, you know, just a time to share. And I know that it has been uh, a challenging year, but where I come from and how I see things, God is still God. And that doesn't change. No matter how your circumstances change, God doesn't. And if God, if you have God in your life, if you believe in God in whatever way you believe, I'm not telling you how I'm telling you when you know that's something greater than you holding you, you don't get shaken by the things that you are going through. So no matter where you're at, take this time to just love, look forward to what's going to come to you in the future and know that you have a say so in the matter. Uh, that's just me coming in. That's not even why I'm here, but I just had to share that with you. I am extremely excited right now. Uh, you know, this week is special, obviously. Like I just explained, you know, why uh, tomorrow is such a big day. But then the following week, I get to see children smile larger than they normally smile. We have some smilers in our house, so it's going to be great. And then, you know, just to see you know, that despite all of it, you know, there's still some joy in the air. It's going to be great for me. Uh, I want to share something with you, but I also want, I want to share something with you about how you approach uh, your failures or your perceived failures. And I'm going to be real brief with it this morning because there's a lot to get done. But before I do that, I want to definitely direct you to something I'm excited and proud about. I am on the verge of releasing, I've just published, I'm on the verge of releasing book number 23, uh, Merging Souls, Healing Hope and Restoration in the Modern Marriage. It is a follow-up to my fourth book, which was When Your House is Not a Home, that primarily dealt with conflict in the marriage. Uh, it touched somewhat on preparing for marriage, uh, but it focused specifically on how to deal with conflict in a marriage. This is going to be a more comprehensive examination of what marriage is, how you de how you how you have to approach marriage, uh, what you should and should not do, and how you can heal, grow, strengthen your marriage, and all of the other myths about marriage, perfect mates, perfect marriages. All of that's going to be addressed in this book, and we're going to delve into it. And the hopes is that you can take something away that will help you either prepare for marriage. Uh, if you can go into marriage with the proper expectations and the proper preparation, half the battle is won. If, if, if you're already in a marriage and you have a great marriage, how to enhance it uh, and improve, because we all can improve as individuals and as couples. 
and if you have a marriage that may be struggling and suffering uh if it's if it's salvageable and to me if there's no deception no abuse no neglect it's salvageable it's how much you want to put into it and both parties have to participate one person cannot leverage and save a marriage and so that that's what this book about i want to t uh, our goal for the pre-order of this book which will drop on uh january the first is 1000 copies pre-order um we're going to start today with pushing for 100 copies today so i would love for you to share this video and any other thing you see about the book share it with others um i i know for a fact because i do a great deal of research in observing what's happening on social media there's a lot of uh, turmoil and turbulence in relationships that isn't nece necessary and can be helped and so sh i would love for you to share that uh here's the beauty here's here, here's the thing uh not only will you get it at a discounted price if you pre-order it you it, uh you get a signed copy but more importantly you will be entered into a lottery to where you can win a 12 uh, week coaching or consulting uh, uh, 12 week coaching or cons uh, consulting session package uh, with yours truly uh, that is valued at $2,540 so that's $2,540 uh, that you will be qualified to enter into a lottery for so definitely get the word out get your pre-order your copy be prepared for to be blessed now real briefly not every person that you find that considers themselves to be quote unquote um, uh, a, a, an online uh, inspirational motivational teacher what what the, what is being uh, widely cons uh, referred to as an influencer is going to be honest with you uh, very few of them are going to be transparent with you that's something that I've tried to do since I've first landed on social media and use it as a platform to spread a message and w what i mean by being transparent is most people want to show you their successes but wh wh without ever exposing you to your fa their failures uh while i may not be very specific about my failures because some of them are personal not so much to protect me because i don't get concerned what other people think of me but other people may be involved. And if it involves anything with my family, you definitely won't be exposed to it because my job is to protect my family. But what I will tell you is, if you're not failing, you're not trying. If you're not failing, you found a place of comfort that you decided to hang out at that you know if you just pretty much wake up every day and show out, show up, You'll get what you get and you won't ever have to experience failure, but you'll never truly live. You're existing, but you're not living. If you're really truly trying to be the best you can possibly be, that means you're constantly exposing yourselves to things you've never done before. And you're not going to get it right the first time every time. Matter of fact, you will rarely get it right the first time. It's about going out there and trying. It's about going out there and saying, you know what, this is what I'm capable of doing. This is what I'm going to do. The first video I did sucked. Matter of fact, I had a troll that stuck with me for a year when I first started doing YouTube videos that told me how much my videos sucked and mocked how little uh, 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 attention and exposure they were getting that I didn't have but so many views and I only had so many subscribers, but I didn't quit. You know what I did? Instead of making excuses, instead of blaming this person for pointing out the obvious, I decided I was going to get better. And I know by repetition, I was going to get better. I knew by being able to find a way to connect, to become as authentic as myself. So what I first thing I decided to do, I'm not anyone else. I'm not anyone else out there that does this. So I'm not going to emulate anyone else. I'm going to do me and I'm going to do me the way I've always done me. But I'm going to be able and I'm going to talk about things that I think that are relevant. And I'm going to be truthful and honest about it. And I have. So the first thing is you can't make excuses for your failures. Let me tell you what you do with your failures. Grieve them. 
grieve your failures. You know what happens when you grieve your failures? There's this pain you feel that's very uncomfortable that really, that's what's actually forcing most people to make excuses is when you when you look at your failures, it's easier to sit up and say, that person did this to me, or if I would have did this, or if that would have happened, if that, that's, 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 just, grieve them, say, you know what, I tried my best, or I tried this, and maybe I didn't try my best, maybe I didn't put all into it, maybe I need to work on my work ethic, maybe I need to work on my product knowledge, maybe I need to work on relating to my client, whatever it is, I can do it better, and instead of making an excuse, grieve it, because that grieving process creates a level of discomfort that's going to make you try harder. It's going to make you want to do more. It's going to make you be persistent. But what happens when you grieve it, you grow. You grow because while you're grieving it, you're evaluating what you did. You're evaluating how you did it. And you're saying, maybe that wasn't the best way. It's going to make you be more focused. It's going to make you put more effort in. But it's also going to build the toughness and resilience inside of you that won't allow you to be inhibited by the fear of failing. So many people are procrastinators. And procrastination is the thief of, of, of time and opportunity. And you know why the the you know what the largest uh, cause of procrastination is fear of failure. If I get out there and I do this and I fall on my face, and then the fear of what people are going to think about what happens to you if you fail. Stop searching for the approbation of others. Stop looking at what other people think of you. God gifted you with a unique gift that nobody else in this world possesses in the way that you possess it. Walk in it, move in it, operate in it, enhance it, refine it, grow in it, and be intent on living in it every day. This thing doesn't come by meandering through life. This thing doesn't come by casually flowing through life. When you live life casually, you will ultimately become a casualty. That is just simply what happens. You got to be intent. You got to be forceful. You got to be set in your mind on what you're going to do. And no, 99% of the time that you're deciding that you're going to do something exceptional, that you're going to do something extraordinary and phenomenal, 99% of the time you will not know how. At the moment you make the decision of going higher, it is none of your business how. It is simply your concern of making a commitment to get it done. When you make the commitment and you step out on faith, that first step is normally taken blindly. But when you take it, the doors of providence open up and things you never imagined start to happen solely because you refuse to be held in check by fear, solely because you refuse to be held in check by uncertainty. You've got to learn how to step forward. Don't make excuses. Don't point fingers of blame. It's nothing wrong with holding people accountable for the things they do. Definitely call them on their crap. But let don't let that be the reason why you don't get it done. Because see, the way you're built, the way you've been designed, you're built for the challenges. You're built for the people who are going to come in and try to disrupt what you're doing. You're built for delay. You're built for disappointments. You're built for setbacks. You're built to get through every obstacle that you think you're going to ever come against. There's absolutely nothing that stops destiny from happening. That's the very definition of it. The more you try to stop destiny, you only ensure that it happens. Anybody that gets in your way trying to stop what God has destined you to do only becomes a part of your destiny. I encourage you to move forward no matter how it looks now. It's not always going to look great. There are going to be some challenges, especially when you're trying to climb the higher heights. There are going to be some 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 bad moves you're going to make. That's a part of the game. There are going to be some bad choices. That's a part of the game. Your intent is what's important. Are you climbing with an intent of doing better, being better, 
uh, serving better. And, and, and if that's the case, you're going to find it because it's not going to be withheld from you. You're going to have to put in some serious time, but you, you're going to find it. I challenge you to wake up in the morning with a heart of gratitude and a mind of intent. I challenge you, wake up with, with a heart that before you even do anything else, it says, thank you. And then have a mind of intent. Today, I will touch a life. Today, I will do something significant. Today, I will make something happen. And watch what happens. It's not magic. It's going to require work and commitment. But you got it. I promise you, you've got it. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Like I said, don't forget what I mentioned in the beginning. Pre-order your book now. Uh, I'm excited about the work I've done on this book. Pre-order your book now and be entered into a lottery to win 12 sessions, 12 week, 12 weeks, a session a week with yours truly and coaching or consulting to help you get to the next level of your life. Uh, we're pushing for 100 books. Now get your copy, share it with someone else. These will make great post-Christmas gifts, great New Year's gifts for people who want to have a better marriage uh, throughout 2021, uh, for those who want to prepare for marriage, to have a better understanding of it, and definitely do it today. Go out, share it, make it happen. On that note, as I always say, I'm going to live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. And on that note, I'm out of here. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Talk about it, all of the elements.